entre tanta tristeza. allí angustiado solo y hundido en ti no te han comprendido mi hermano crees que llegaste a tu fin ven aquí Espera por ti Aún sigues allí Angustiado Usa tus alas 
espera por ti.
ustedes han escuchado You have heard sobre our teachings about aquellos exorcistas ambulantes those itinerant exorcists who wanted to take out from a possessed the authority the governorship that had them submitted there and they said in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches and they wanted to command in a higher kingdom but of course without real fruit that authority that dominion inferno presented an answer Jesus I know and Paul I know about but who are you that question that fundamental premise takes us to the importance of knowing each of us who we really are the knowledge of yourself in a real way there shouldn't be someone who has more concept or a higher concept of himself than he should have no one should have it that's what the word says starting from there from the knowledge of yourself the scripture says the Lord Jesus knowing who he was where he came from and where he was going who he was his present where he came from his past and where he was going his future Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever the past the present and the future doesn't affect him so the past the present and the future just like Jesus Christ is the same forever there is a timelessness in the Lord and you should experiment that same thing regarding the knowledge of yourself you me or any of us this sand is very soft my feet are sinking in well it's a better exercise and so if you are sinking in a problem because your present is that you were abandoned you were disappointed you were lied to you were betrayed that's a real present it could have even happened in the past and it's keeping you in a present of defeat well Hmm. What can I say? There's not just past and present. There's a step forward, just like we're doing it here. I'm giving a step and another and another. A step forward. I won't stay. I won't stop. I won't step back. if you stay sunk in the accusation the embarrassment the frustration well someone will enjoy that you are sunk in defeat in which way can we make a mantle of sadness 
become one of happiness in an oil of feast. How can this be done? Putting your eyes in Jesus, timeless in the Jesus that the Apostle Paul believed in, in who your grandmother, mother or father believed, and in who you can believe, and your children, and your grandchildren. Always, we can be safe in Him. We are above the times. If you can find yourself in Him, in Christ, where the old has gone, and therefore departing from that experience, everything is a novelty to life, everything is a new life, and so you pass from theory to experience, to involvement. Precisely, the Apostle Paul, just like that tale of the itinerant exorcist, sons of Sceva, lived something similar and comparable. We can find it in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 5. When Saul was on his way to Damascus, maybe he wasn't jogging, but just the same, when the Lord appears, it's fantastic, it's exciting, it's unique, it's something singular that doesn't compare to anything. Suddenly, from the sky, a light flashed around him. It was more resplendent than the sun, and so he couldn't see. And the first thing he says, he who will become in the future the Apostle Paul, preacher and apostle to the Gentiles, is who are you Lord the same question the same the same question that was asked to the exorcist we need to know who is in front of us the demons need to know that and in the kingdom of heaven, they do too. But you need to know who is your Lord. To know yourself, it's fundamental. But approaching an unknown God cannot just be that. That would have to be the first question of your life, of your ministry. Who are you, Lord? We can't be obedient of the teachings and the example that the Apostle Paul gives us. This Rabbi Shaul of the tribe of Benjamin to read his epistles and not imitate in his starting point. Precisely, here we have what needs to be done. Who are you, Lord? That's the question. To start to know him, to know him, and the Heavenly Father, to know the mystery of God, the Father, and Christ, that's eternal life. We can't love what we don't know. You love your son, your mother, your wife, or husband. 
Or because you know them. Or you knew them. That's the starting point. That same apostle, later on, is going to teach us. He writes to the Galatians, but also to all of us. How God was pleased to choose him from the beginning, but to call him in the moment that we just talked about. And, as an answer to that question, Who are you, Lord? Well, God was pleased to reveal His Son in Him. In Him. Not to Him. But in Him. He was in heaven. And he was present in the life of the glass, like a container for water that can reflect the light of the sun. The sun is in the sky and is being reflected, its presence, its brightness in the water that represents him. All your life will change dramatically wonderfully, powerfully, from the moment that the presence of the life of God in you, through His Holy Spirit, is in a clear and conscious way, in your life, in your experience. If you have the conscience that you are temple of the Holy Spirit of God, from that moment of conscious on, not from the point of baptism in water, or going to a meeting, or to a convention, but from that moment on, your life changes, and it starts to be transformed from glory to glory. And so that is the word that is yes and is amen. It's a promise. It's a certainty that we have. Considering these things, we arrive to a truly very important light about which I invite you almost to repent and convert in this fundamental area and it's because it's possible that the gospel that your mind has or that your heart has is a gospel that is centered in you in which you are in the throne and so you want God to help you, heal you, prosper you, bless you protect you and aid you in the moment of need and I'm not saying that God doesn't intervene in that way but this is fundamental the first thing is that the gospel should be centered in him it's Jesus Christ's gospel for us but it's his gospel for you for your life for your salvation, but it's His Gospel. That's why the first question is, Who are you, Lord? When He is the center of everything, when He is the one that's sitting in the throne and not you, in that moment, is that we start to put things in order. The table with the legs facing down, not up. Many things may have turned out the wrong way that we had planned. And that's exactly why. Because we haven't organized something that is so fundamental. First question, oh Lord, why don't you answer to me? Lord, 
Why aren't you by my side? No estás a mi lado. Ni siquiera la pregunta. We don't even ask the question of ¿Por qué me has desamparado? My God, why have you forsaken me? Because that question comes afterwards. After Jesus knew who he was, where he came from, and where he was going. You see, after that, you can ask whatever you want. Maybe that's why many things haven't turned out the way they were planned. Maybe that's why some of the prayers don't have an answer yet. Maybe that's why some of the blessings that are destined for your life, for your family, for your ministry, for your economy, for the plenitude of your life. Maybe that's why they are still detained. If we organize things like Moses that put the utensils of the tabernacle in order and he anointed them, then the glory of God is going to fill just like it filled that temple. It will fill this temple. You are the temple. You will be filled with the glory of God, with the life of God, full of God's Holy Spirit. And so, if you change your prayer and you adjust it to this that we are talking about, and you start to put first First, first, remember the first commandment, love the Lord your God. First, who are you, Lord? And that's before you say, Lord, listen to my prayers, hear my cry, oh Lord, have misery of me. And so, what are we going to do? We're going to, as the word says, repent and turn to God, so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. We are going to change things. We're going to change, not everything. The things that are a blessing in your life, we're going to keep those but we are going to change those where the light of God doesn't shine, where there is defeat, where there is sadness. Just like the jingle we hear at the beginning, where there is sadness, where there is pain. We are changing everything, even religiousness, for a profound, real, spiritual experience. And then Christ will appear exactly where he wasn't and everything will change in your life at home in your family of your relatives of the people that you have in your heart God will start to shine in their lives and that's what you want isn't it that's why you fasted prayed gave offerings and cried out to the God in heaven you have worshipped in the presence of God for the people that you love. We want the Son of Righteousness to appear, to shine in their lives. Don't stop it. Don't let it be for my or your or our responsibility. We are going to do what we have to do. First, we need to start by Him. Who are you? So that He can reveal His Son in you. In all of us. 
And so then, we will be able to pass from victory to victory. Well, I hope that things are clear enough. And so now, we're going to calm down a little so we can pray for this. We're going to stop. We're going to stop just a bit. We're going to pray together now. We're going to give the microphone. And obviously, it's not here. Not here on the beach. She's in the studio. Sister Paloma. She's always with us. When she's not present physically, her heart is here. And that's how I am with her. That's how I am with all of you who are listening to me. And so, let's go for the knowledge of Him. Let's go and get that. It's personal. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Ask him, this is according to his will. Reveal yourself to my life. I want to know you. I want to know your word. I want to know your will. That's the eternal life. Everything centered in him. And yourself is there, like the wagons of a train that are stuck together, to the great locomotive. The rest will be given to you as well. The answer to your prayers are there. They are given to you as well. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Let's pray. Muchísimas gracias, hermano Alfredo. Qué maravilla la creación, ese cielo, esas nubes, este mar, qué belleza, estos colores, este paisaje, esta arena. Le damos gracias al Señor por su existencia, hermano Alfredo, por su palabra, que nos refresca, que nos llena de vida, que nos enseña con sabiduría para nosotros poder caminar, porque es lámpara a nuestros pies esa palabra que usted nos trae cada día. Gracias, Señor, por todos aquellos a quienes tú has enviado, Padre, porque nosotros encontramos dentro nuestro el deseo de recibirlos como si fueras tú mismo. Gracias, Señor, porque no somos de aquellos que rechazamos a quien tú envías, sino que le acogemos, le recibimos y caminamos según lo que tú enseñaste cuando viniste, cuando caminaste por esta tierra. Bendito Señor, te damos muchas gracias porque tenemos claridad porque tú nos regalas la claridad para no equivocarnos, para no fallar, Señor. Muchísimas gracias, porque estamos atentos a todo cuanto tienes para decirnos, Padre. No para ser solo oidores, sino hacedores de tu palabra. Aquí estamos, Señor, incondicionales contigo, no teniendo un alto concepto de nosotros, sino reconociendo quién eres tú en nuestra vida. Eres tú quien nos tenta la sabiduría. Eres tú quien tiene el poder, eres tú quien puede ungirnos, Padre. Solamente tú, solamente porque tú lo decides, porque tú nos escogiste. Y porque nosotros estamos poniendo la casa en orden, Padre. Porque estamos ordenando los utensilios, las herramientas. Ordenando tu casa, Señor, para que tú puedas ungirnos y para que puedas llenar esta casa de gloria. Porque ese es nuestro anhelo más profundo. Porque vienen tiempos de refrigerio, porque hemos trabajado, porque hemos sembrado, porque hemos creído, Señor. Y sabemos que cuando hacemos tal como tú nos has enseñado, Señor, cuando caminamos tal como tú nos has enseñado, tus promesas se cumplen. Bendito, Señor, porque para nosotros 
Tú eres lo más importante y eso es lo que está sucediendo en nuestras vidas, Padre. Estamos ordenando todo en el lugar que le corresponde y tú debes estar en el trono de nuestra vida y allí, Señor, allí, de allí nos estamos quitando nosotros para darte ese lugar a ti que es el tuyo. Bendito Señor, bendito Padre, que nos pones tareas, que nos enseñas cosas, Padre, para poder alegrarte, para poder cumplir todo cuanto nos dices. Bendito Señor, porque sabemos que este templo que somos nosotros será lleno de la gloria tuya, Padre. Gracias por esas palabras que escuchamos hoy. Gracias porque nos llenan de vida, porque nos llenan de gozo, porque nos llenan de esperanza, Señor. Porque tú eres nuestra gloria, porque tú eres nuestra recompensa, porque tú eres nuestra razón de vivir y de existir, Señor. Bendito eres. Te pedimos, Padre, en esta noche, por todas las personas que han escrito, Padre, queriendo acercarse a ti, agarrándose de esas promesas, Señor. Y todas estas personas, y yo junto con ellos, estamos poniendo la casa en orden para que todo cuanto han anhelado, Señor, puedan verlo realizado en sus vidas por el poder de la palabra, Señor, sí, pero por el poder tuyo, Señor, porque tú haces posible todo aquello que para nosotros ha sido imposible. Te pedimos entonces, Señor, por Alex Díaz, Álvaro Silva, Aurora López, Bárbara de Dávila, Blanca Umaña, Claudia Polo, Daisy Arrieta, Daisy Murcia, Disney Ladino, Emerlet Castillo, Esteban Castañeda, Fabio Arciniegas, Floral Barríos, Flor Chávez, Gildardo Rojas, Gloria Colorado, Iraida González, Irina Lara, Jairo Espina, Javier Medina, John Belloso, José Castillo, José David Camacho, Juan Camilo Méndez, Juan Diego Cárdenas, Juan Gamboa, Karina Chaparro, Karina González, Lady Barón, Liliana Romero, Luceni Adames, Lucero Tacha, Luz Dari Sánchez, Margarita Celis, María Cubides, Marisol Quique, Miguel Ortega, Nelvis Mercado, Nuri Cárdenas, Omaira Urrego, Rafael Alberto López, Marlene Buitrago, Rodolfo Ladino, Rómulo Montoya, Rosa Borques, Víctor Hugo Borques, Rosa Mejía, Sandra Celis, Sandra Samuel Olarte, Tatiana Buitrago, Tomás Sierra, Yasmín Joya, Jenny Carvajal y Zoraida Jaramillo. Gracias, Señor. Bendito eres tú, Padre. Bendito eres tú que tienes en tu mano el poder para hacer o para no hacer o para deshacer. Bendito Señor, porque tú deshaces todo aquello que es una carga en nuestra vida. Bendito Señor, porque tú deshaces la enfermedad, la miseria, la tristeza, la pobreza y todo aquello que retrasa nuestro andar. Bendito Señor, porque tú haces que nuestro corazón sea un corazón de carne que se duela de tu obra. Bendito Señor, porque tú detienes tu mano cuando nosotros te hemos contrariado, Señor, y tú esperas de manera misericordiosa que nosotros entendamos y caminemos tu palabra. Bendito eres tú, Señor. Bendito tú, que eres la grandeza, que eres la el poder, Señor, bendito tú que eres la gloria, bendito Señor que eres la eternidad, bendito tú porque eres lo maravilloso, lo grande, lo portentoso, tú eres el gozo, tú eres la alegría, tú eres la plenitud, bendito Señor porque tú eres todo eso para nosotros y no queremos nada fuera de ti, Señor, tú eres lo primero, lo segundo, lo tercero, tú eres todo para nosotros y todos los demás, nuestras peticiones, nuestras oraciones o nuestros anhelos son una simple añadidura, Bendito Señor, te pedimos estas cosas para poder servirte mejor. Pero aquí estamos, Padre, siempre hacia adelante contigo, nunca retrocediendo, siempre recibiendo con un corazón agradecido y gozoso tu palabra, cualquiera que sea ella. Bendito Señor, porque nosotros no somos de los que retroceden, porque tú nos enseñaste a avanzar en el camino, por difícil que fuera, porque tú no echaste para atrás cuando tuviste que ir al Gólgota, Señor, nosotros no echamos para atrás cuando tengamos ninguna dificultad, porque tú, tú eres nuestra razón de ser y hemos puesto nuestros ojos en ti y así como estuvimos contigo y queremos estar contigo en todas las cosas lindas, hermosas, maravillosas y queremos estar contigo en la gloria y en la plenitud de tu unción, Señor, también queremos estar contigo en el Gólgota y allí iremos voluntariamente como tú nos enseñaste. Bendito y alabado eres tú, Señor, porque contigo 
cualquier circunstancia, Señor, está llena de gozo, porque tu sola presencia en nuestra vida es la principal razón para querer seguir viviendo. Porque contigo, Señor, la vida, la vida es un deleite. Tú eres nuestro deleite. Bendito y alabado eres tú por siempre, Señor. Amén. Desde el principio, Dios ha querido hacer una obra de separar para unir, separando todas las cosas para poderlas volver a reunir, pero esta vez en Cristo, en Cristo. Separó la luz de las tinieblas, separó las aguas, las de arriba de las de abajo, separó la tierra de los mares, Separó la mujer del varón. Y más adelante, cuando la humanidad, el pueblo, estaba en unidad, entonces dijo Dios, el pueblo es uno y tiene un solo lenguaje. Han comenzado la obra y nada les hará desistir de lo que han pensado hacer. Descendamos confundamos su lengua para que ninguno entienda el habla de su compañero y así nos esparció Jehová sobre toda la faz de la tierra y ahora en el tiempo de la restauración de todas las cosas de que hablaron los profetas desde el tiempo antiguo, está viniendo la palabra que está uniendo todas las cosas en Cristo y el pueblo está volviendo a ser uno y uno su nombre, y uno su nombre con un Señor, con una fe, con una palabra que nos reúne a todos. Esto es Cristo. Cristo.
Salta de su 